Boo! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. <laughs> I'm Daniel. I am Rex. So we're drinking three Texas distilleries in the next three videos. Uh, two of them making Texas whiskey. Okay. This is Cooper Family okay. Distillery. Where are um, they? They are over by LaGrange. So you can't say the word Lagrange without immediately falling. <laughs> <out. laughs> <laughs> so I like this one. Uh, I like their label on this one because they specifically say a prodigal son bourbon. Okay. And then right underneath it, uh, Kentucky, right? Yeah. A can, distilled in Kentucky, aged in Texas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So no, no attempt at trying to tell anybody it is anything that it's not. Which was, like, I think we recently did, like, a Japanese thing, which was some sketchy-ass shit, man. Yeah. And they, and apparently, you know, not to us, but they were very defensive about some blogs that were calling them out. Then they tried to drop their shit for all well, their no, consumers. Like, the point is, in whiskey, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You just gotta be clear about what you're doing so people can make an informed choice. Right. That's it. So the reason I'm interested in this is because we source MGP for our stuff, right? Yeah. And it spends a real chunk of time in Texas and it becomes unrecognizable to some of the MGP guys, Yeah. right? That's yeah. the impact of Texas. This is aged in Texas. Yeah, this is Kentucky. Yeah, it's Kentucky whiskey, but it's not just like buy some Kentucky and just shove it in a bottle. Right, so they let it cook. They let it cook in Texas. Yeah. So this is what Kentucky tastes like when aged in Texas. Uh. See what I mean? This is a gift from Estevan De Leon. Estevan De Leon, you magnificent bastard. Right. And we do we know any where in Kentucky? No. No, we don't. Well, I got some on my fingers. Maybe Barton. What do you think? There's that cherry, Ooh, that front-loaded cherry I note. Thing. I got some really nice bready baking spice. Some cinnamon in there. Some butter. Ooh, it's like a buttered, baked cinnamon. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, it's it's a very beautiful nose. There's a darker note in here that I'm used to for the cherry. And was there any age statement on that? Uh, no, but... So the Kentucky roots, they're definitely here. Mm -hmm. It didn't cook it into like this weird exotic creature that's unrecognizable. This is very much um, uh, Kentucky whiskey with those... Um, classic bourbon notes that you're expecting. I think this is at least four because it's straight bourbon, but it has no age statement. Uh, like a honey, there's like a tea quality in there. I get the tea really up front, yeah. but there's also this not the cherry note is quickly turning into an herbal note for yeah, me. Yeah, see, it's it's um, it was like a honey herbal mm -hmm. um, with the tea. It's kind of like you have an herbal tea and you put in a little bit of honey. Right. Now these guys early on were doing Cooper family rye and sourcing rye and yeah. doing all these different things, right? And they've been pretty upfront about it. They, they have, some of them they didn't quite tell you what was going on, but, but they have sort of uh, started talking to people about what they're calling themselves as a blending house. Okay. They're not still. I mean, they have a still, I think, but they're, they're saying, well, like, well, our job here is to blend. And so it's very much like what Heather's doing at, you know, My Lemon Green. Right. Like, just trying to create and source interesting things and then blend to create interesting products. Sure. And I like that trend. As long as it results in something totally new. This is not totally new. It's not. It's very familiar. And I'm trying to see what the text is added to this because it's hard to tell. I'm not getting it. It's hard to tell with a, without an age statement for context. Right. Because a lot of times what that heat impact and that aging in Texas will give it will be some more depth and concentrated flavor. Um, but that can also, a big part of that can also come from extra age. So usually there's like this, you know, a molasses -y quality. This yeah, what I would mark as a Texas note yeah. isn't in here at all. Yeah. Like well, what I've historically marked as a Texas note isn't in here at all, but it is proofed down to 43%. Uh, okay. In theory, this is 78 corn, 10 rye, 12 malt. So it's malt is the secondary grain in this one. Okay. Yeah, if you like Kentucky bourbon. Yeah, it just tastes like, it's it like, doesn't taste like anything Texan. Tastes like a nice Kentucky bourbon. What would you compare that? You wanna try the Barton? And see if it compares to the Barton? I do want to try the Barton and see if it compares 
to the Barton. You know what I think we should do? What's that? I think we should try the Barton and see if it compares. Look, usually you and I are on the same page. Right. But I think in this situation, we're going to have to do something wildly different. We're going to have to compare it to the Barton. The Barton. And then see. Well, let's agree to disagree. I'm right. Oh, the Barton is a much more aromatic wood note. Not tanniny or bitter, aromatic. Oh, and the there's a there's almost a candy corn note now in the Cooper. Mm -hmm. You notice that? A little bit. Like a sweet corn? Because this is so herbal, it accents well, the then. sweet corn note. You said the Barton is herbal? Mm-hmm. I'm getting more of like a potpourri aromatic type of... Like a... If you, if you do, if Wicker was floral and voluptuous. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. It doesn't. Don't worry. No. It's just nonsense. But if wicker was oh. floral and voluptuous. What it did was it brought out 46.8. It brought out the candy corn, the corn dominant grain in that Cooper release. I don't think it's the same. No. I don't think they didn't, they didn't source it from Barton. No. I don't think so either. But um, regardless, this is sweeter. It's sweeter. And it's very much um, a flavor set that you know and love from Kentucky. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we have Stephen C. The stepping back is just you taking it all in and being observant. I like you, Stephen C. You're wise. And it's not the Rex shuffle. Knowledge beyond your years. You're both trying to give Daniel the space he needs to pour and move around the danger zone while increasing your ability to remain objective. This guy, <laughs> he gets you. He gets you. Me. Feel like he gets you. He gets me. Next time you do it, touch Daniel on the shoulder and see how weird it makes you feel. <laughs> no, don't do it. <laughs> Maybe he's talking about my feelings. Yeah, this isn't for you. I know. <laughs> oh. And a little massage. Oh God. <laughs> uh, Speaking of, we should do. An episode called. <laughs> it's just. It does. It's really not hard to get. Daniel just out all out of sorts. Dude, I got like goosebumps all down my arm. Uh, so I'm just spitballing here. I'm just throwing it out there. Because April first is coming. Mm -hmm. I think April Fool's episode. Maybe. Okay. We finally do something for April Fool's. Have you ever? Um, you Are we playing this, that game? Have you ever heard of this idea? Have of, you ever? Of, have you never? Have you ever heard of this game? Uh, uh, this idea of exposure therapy. Yeah, I have. It's what they did basically on that show of like facing your fears. Yeah. With like putting someone's head in a box of spiders and. Yeah. So, I think some exposure therapy. No, no, for your, no. For your phobias. No, no, no. This is not what we do. <laughs> for your this phobias. is not what we do. <laughs> and, then, and then I think that, ep that episode would be welcome to the Whiskey Dungeon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's real. Torture. <laughs> it's just he's ready to flinch. Oh, uh, Gregory Zepp. Good work, Stephen C. <laughs> Gregory Zepp. I feel like Greg's called me Gary deliberately for recommending the Brushwood special haircut before it was an option on the voting list. Yeah. That was so many years ago. That's right, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you get. That's funny. I didn't realize he was the one responsible for that, but that's pretty awesome. Gary. <laughs> Freaking Gary. Freaking Gary. I wish I knew the age statement. I wish I knew the source, and I wish I knew how long in Texas so I can triangulate because right now yeah. this is just striking me as a very Kentucky-esque bourbon. Yeah. It's nice. It's good. Uh, there's some flavors in there that people have known and loved for many years. Yeah. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drink. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. Steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us.